Welcome back to Hands and Feet Homestead. Today I'm going to take you along with us as we lacto-ferment some of our radishes from our garden harvest. Now first, before we begin, um, I just wanted to go over some of the um, benefits of lacto-fermentation um, as opposed to some other methods of storing your food. Uh, it's actually healthier for you to take this way, even healthier than um, eating it fresh and raw. It actually makes the fermentation process, it creates a lactic acid, which is the preservative for it. But in the way that it is preserved, it actually makes the minerals and vitamins more, um, more available to your body and it enhances them. So it is actually better for you, it um, gives you more vitamins and minerals, um, and it also creates um, good bacteria uh, or probiotics, so it really helps with your gut health. So uh, not only is it healthy for you, but it also is just so easy and just like hassle-free and just uh, I just love it that's my favorite way to preserve my vegetables so far so we've done a few different things we've done um, we always have sauerkraut on hand um, we love uh, everyone in my family even my two-year-old loves the sauerkraut we've done pickled beets my two-year-old loves pickled beets so we're gonna see if she likes this today I'm not sure um, she has never had the radishes before but we'll see. Um, she's had carrots, uh, pickled carrots, pickled green beans. And when I say pickled, I mean lacto-fermented, not vinegar brine. Uh, just join us today as I take you through the process of making these lacto-fermented radishes. What do you find? All right. Harvesting the radishes for me. <laughs> Look at all. Those. Show me all those radishes. Let's see them. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> oh, you got more there. Purple. You got pink and purple. Awesome. You want to put them down right there? Put them together, and then we'll bring them in and wash them. Okay, so we're back inside in the kitchen now. I have my radishes that I'm going to be fermenting. We're going to do lacto-fermentation. Uh, so we just need to wash them up and get them cut up. I'm going to um, I'm going to either half or quarter them. You take off the long, this uh, little part at the end and then the top. So then you're just having the nice edible radish part in there. Uh, <laughs> and Hannah has the scapes, garlic scapes. So I might, I know with garlic scapes, people generally will cut the flower end off. If it, um, <laughs> cut this flower part off. Cause they said it's kind of chewy um, in a ferment. So I might just do that to add into the radish um, ferment for flavoring. <laughs> Okay, so we're done chopping. <coughs> so I have my clean jar here. Um, you can pour bo boiling hot water over the jar to sterilize it. Just start putting it in your clean jar. So I planted some dill early this year so that I would have some for purposes like this. But I went out, I had six plants, I started early. <laughs> this is all I have left. <laughs> Some sort of animal got in there and took a little munch. So we got the one little piece of dill in there. So you can get creative with this, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so this is the saltwater brine. It's uh, pink Himalayan salt. You can use any other type of non-iodized salt. 
um, like Redmond's Real Salt is a good option. But you're going to do a teaspoon of sea salt or salt to one cup of water. Uh, so I did six cups, so I have six teaspoons or two tablespoons of uh, salt. So what I normally do is heat up some water so that it's boiling hot up to about here and then I'll put the water, the salt in and I'll let that dissolve, um, get the salt really dissolved and then I'll put the cold water on top of it to make it ready to go because you don't want to put boiling hot water on your ferment. So you're going to go and just, you have your vegetables, whatever else you want to put in there, any seasonings. I did some dill, I did the garlic scapes at the bottom, um, the gar garlic, part of the garlic scape, like the flowering part, and then some radishes, and I did some little piece of fresh dill that I had from outside, and I put a little bit of dried dill that I harvested from last year's um, garden. So. Pickling spice, and I did some extra dill seed as well. So you just pack the vegetables in there. It's super easy. Pour your brine over. Give it a good shake before you do that. Um, so this is a pickle puck. You can get it from um, Mason Tops. They make that. Uh, they make this, and also this fermenting lid. So <laughs> so it's just a glass top that goes on top of your ferment to make sure that it all stays submerged underneath the water so you don't have any bacteria build up or anything like that and then you have your little top that goes on top with the normal ring to keep it on so we're just gonna go ahead and so you're gonna do that put the little top on top so this way if you use these you don't need to come and burp your jars every every day um, it has a little valve here and it just lets the carbon dioxide build up out as it's needed. But it also keeps them from anything outside getting in. So they're very, very awesome yes. and handy. Um, and then that's all you do. So you want to go ahead and uh, let it sit out on your counter for about seven days or so. It could be a little bit less time or a little bit more time depending on how warm it is in your house. Um, also, how sour you really like it. Um, if you let it go longer, it'll be a little bit more sour than um, you do less time. So, um, what I like to do is just taste it. It's been four days, so I'm gonna go ahead and just taste it and see how I like it um, and see if I wanna let it keep going for a few more days. So, this is it, guys. Um, it's just been sitting on the countertop. It doesn't need to be anywhere special, just out of direct sunlight. See? Mmm. Mm. That's good. Mm. Yeah, it was really warm in that room where it's been sitting. So I think it's done. I think I'm going to go with that. So I just went ahead and tasted it and it tastes great. It has a little bit of sour flavor to it. Um, yeah, it's great. It's a little like bubbly, like carbonated. Um, honestly, fermenting stuff is so great and I love the flavor. My husband likes it. My, even, even my two-year-old really likes it. Um, she won't, she doesn't like the radishes raw because they're a little spicy but this takes away the spice so if your kids will like this with the, the dill and everything in it and it has a really good flavor they might they might be able to enjoy the radishes like this okay so then when you get it to the point where you like it where you like the taste of it you go ahead and put it into cold storage just put it in your refrigerator and then you can enjoy it for you know six months to a year or maybe even longer than that. Um, it might just get a little more mushy as time goes on, but it'll last a really long time in there. Um, that's another thing I really love about this um, fermenting. So, um, so I will say what we use is are these uh, plastic mason top jars. They're great to put on, so you can just put the lid on and then just stick it in your fridge. If you use the regular metal 
uh, lids and rings, it's possible that it could start to rust a little bit over time. Um, so that's why I like to use these. We have a little cold storage area in our pump house underground. So I, I did uh, store a bunch of sauerkraut in there this winter and I used the metal rings and lids and they got a little rusty. Sauerkraut was totally fine, but from now on I'm gonna use the <laughs> plastic lids. So that's it guys. Uh, it's really simple. It's such a healthy way to enjoy your harvest and all the hard work you put into your garden and let it last a long time. Um, and it's really fun to experiment and it's super fast and super easy and it's super healthy for you. I hope that this was beneficial to you somehow, that you learned something or give you some inspiration to try some fermenting on your own. So we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for joining us. Take care and God bless.